Blue Coal presents The Shadow, the man of mystery who strikes terror in the very souls of sharpsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Friends, there's no longer any need for you to rely on guesswork when it comes to buying fuel. Now you can get the best fuel for home use, and know it at a glance, too. For Blue Coal, the finest of Pennsylvania hard coal is colored a harmless blue at the mines for your protection so that you can identify it instantly. To be sure that the fuel you buy is a safe, healthy, economical fuel, get America's finest anthracite. Ask for Blue Coal by name. Order your supply tomorrow. clock it comes. But if I hear that horrible thing again, I, I'll go crazy. Oh, this awful house. But it's quiet, my dear. Way out in the country like this, I can install my laboratory here as soon as I get around to it. As for these strange sounds, well, haunted houses have always fascinated me. I've always wanted to meet a ghost, shake hands with him, invite him to tea. Stop talking like that. It's serious. Oh, I've tried to stand it for your sake, Arthur. But I don't know how much longer. My heart isn't strong and I... Hear it? But that's only the wind, isn't it? No. It always starts like that. You know it does. Don't move. Listen. Arthur, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. A ghost, eh? Well, we'll see. I'll meet him this time. I'll meet him halfway, too. Stop! Stop! Come. We'll both meet him. Give me your hand. No! Carolyn. Carolyn, it stopped. Can't you hear me? Goodness me. Has the shock killed her? No, her heart still beats. She's only fainted again. Hmm? Just her husband. Turn the next corner, Lamont. It's that big house set on the hill. May I ask, Margot, the reason for this late call on Carolyn Sneed? to know what's the matter with the poor woman. I got an awful shock when I saw her in town last week. She looks positively haggard. I never saw such a change come over a person. Well, married life may not agree with her. She was a spinster for close to 40 years, wasn't she? I know, but I think she was foolish. Carolyn has nearly a million dollars in her own name. She didn't have to marry. Yes, but right now I'm not the shadow. Remember, I'm just your patient chauffeur, darling. The Mount Cranston, in need of a rest from my famous mystery man role. That last adventure took a lot out of me, you know. Well, a marriage problem is hardly... A... Seriously, though. Nobody knows anything about this man she married. He came into town six months ago, met Carolyn in some accidental manner at the county fair, and proceeded to rush her off her feet. I've met him only once, but I don't like his looks. Hmm. Something sinister, I gather. Hence the shadow idea. Well, who is he anyway? Professor Arthur Sneed, I believe he calls himself. He has a small office in town where he's supposed to be working on inventions or something. Well, here we are. Hmm. Well, usually pretty level-headed, Margot, but don't let your aversion for this man we're seeing be too apparent. <laughs> Really, place, isn't it? I don't see any bell. I guess you're supposed to use the knocker. Here he comes. Well, 
know who it... Oh, it's you, Miss Lane. Yes. Good evening, Professor Sneed. I hope we aren't too late. Too late? And too late for what? Why, I phoned Carolyn that we'd drop in just to say hello. Uh, well, well, she didn't tell me. Uh, Carolyn isn't feeling well at the moment. I, I'm sorry. Good night. Oh, but please, I only want to see her for a moment. That is, unless it's something really serious. Well, it isn't as serious as she pretends to think it is, but... Uh, well, come in. Thank you. Uh, this is my friend, Lamont Cranston. Uh, come in. I'm very happy to see Mr. Cranston. I've heard a lot about him. How do you do? You say Carolyn is ill? She didn't mention it, it when I... It came on suddenly. She's been in a nervous condition lately, but it's mostly imaginary. I made her go to bed. Well, would it be all right if I saw I it? I suppose you... so. Go on up if you like. Well, thanks. I'll only be a few minutes, Lamont. Uh, what seems to be the trouble with your wife, Professor Sneed? Oh, she's run down, I guess. Frightfully nervous. She has some absurd notion that this place is, uh, well, haunted. Haunted? It's only the wind, of course, and the creaking of an old house. Mm. Ghosts. She keeps talking about ghosts. And I can't persuade her that there are no such things. Of course, old houses have a habit of getting themselves haunted, Professor. As for myself, I'm not so sure there aren't such things as ghosts. But surely, Mr. Cranston... Oh, not the conventional sort, perhaps, but... I mean people's spirits. Souls, whatever you want to call them. Haunting the places where they've been unhappy. Very interesting, I'm sure. But a lot of tosh. I put no stock in it. No? I was just noticing that rather rare book on the table, Professor. Neurosis of Death. What? If you're interested in that, I'm sure you must be interested in ghosts. I understand its morbid analysis of the factors of violent death are quite interesting. What do you know about it? Oh, I read all sorts of things, Professor. But professor, please. Oh, uh, yes, Miss Lane? Carolyn wants her sedative. Oh, yes, yes. I, I'll go up and give it to her. Did you find her comfortable, Miss Lane? Well, I, I think Carolyn is seriously ill. Yes, but more nerves than anything. Uh, excuse me uh, just a moment, won't you? Lamont, there's something wrong here. Oh, I was afraid there was. I, I, I don't know what it is, but it's something terrible. Well, what's the matter with Carolyn? Oh, she hardly recognized me, and she talks like one in a trance. As though she were in the grip of some deadly fear. When I suggested sending the doctor over, she shook her head. But I'm going to just the same. I can't help feeling it's, it's that man, her husband. Yes, he isn't very pleasant, is he? His skin has an odd pallor. You see it on men who've spent some time in prison. There are many little traits of his behavior that interest me as a, a psychologist. A remarkable man. But you don't know. I don't know. But I think we'll investigate this more or less formally, Margot. I'll visit the professor tomorrow at his office in town. If there are ghosts involved here, perhaps the shadow can bring them to light. <laughs> Yes, Carolyn. Well, don't worry, my dear. I'll leave the office here at five and I'll be home before six. Yes. Yes, I understand. Goodbye, dear. Well, who is it? Is that you, Miss White? Who's opening that door? Don't get up, Professor. I'll close it after me. What? I thought I might find you in. Who said that? Who are you? Your conscience speaking, Professor. Or have you a conscience? I'll show you what I've got. <laughs> Don't excite yourself. I'm only a voice. A voice they call... Professor, have you ever heard of the shadow? The shadow? Yes. 
You seem to have heard of me. What do you want? I've come to warn you, Sneed. Warn me? Warn me about what? I know what you're doing. What? And I know how it's going to end. The end is death. Death? I have something here I'll toss in your lap. There. Do you hear it? Why, you... Get out of here, I tell you. See it? Look. It's half of a playing card. The ace of spades. When you find the other half, that will be the end. Get out and leave me alone. All right, Sneed, I'll go, but don't forget. The shadow knows. (laughs) Trying to frighten me with his tricks. Oh, coming back, are you? you, Miss White. There are two gentlemen here to see you, Professor Sneed. Two gentlemen? Well, I'm not expecting... I guess you may remember us, Professor Sneed. Spike. Your old friend Spike Collins and Mr. Wilson here. Yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, Please take those circulars on your desk, Miss White, and mail them at the post office right away. Yes, sir. Lock that door, right? Okay. And what are you staring at, Sneed? We ain't ghosts. Uh, I thought you two were doing a stretch at Leavenworth. Yeah, we were. But we framed a getaway. And now we come to see an old pal. Well, now listen, Spike. I'd help you if I could. Nuts. But... We've been watching you and we know your game. We ain't got no time to stall. This old dame you're married has got plenty I of... I don't know what you're driving at. Well, you'll know if we squawk about that dame you married out in Idaho that croaked without anybody knowing what was the matter with her. Cards on the table, Steve. Is this one signed our money over to you? Yes. She fixed her will in my favor. Well, what are you doing to get her? Well, she has a weak heart and... I know. Playing ghost and scaring her to death, eh? Well, that's too slow, Sneed. I got a better scheme. We break into the house. Stage of burglary, see? In a scuffle, the old dame gets shot. Dead. It's quick. No, no. You can't do that. No. You'll see. <laughs> Shadow will return in just a few moments. While we're waiting, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you about the ever-increasing popularity of Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite. Blue Coal is winning new friends every day among New England housewives. They not only like the superior heat of Blue Coal, but they find that it simplifies housekeeping. This is because Blue Coal is so clean. It burns completely and does not send any particles of unburned carbon through the house to be deposited on furniture or woodwork. The drudgery of daily cleaning is reduced to a minimum with this clean fuel. Blue Coal is the largest single brand of solid fuel prepared especially for home use. Each car is laboratory tested at the mines for purity and size before shipment. Blue Coal is Pennsylvania's finest anthracite. So that you can personally identify this excellent fuel, it is actually colored blue at the mine. Order it by name. You will find the name of your nearest Blue Coal dealer listed in the where-to-buy-it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. (laughs) 
Are you comfortable in that chair, Carolyn? Yes, thank you, Margaret, dear. And I do appreciate your coming out here and staying with me. I'm glad to do it. But it's six o'clock. Your husband ought to be coming home pretty soon, shouldn't he? He phoned just before you got here and said he was starting. He seemed very agitated. Oh, he's a strange, unaccountable man sometimes. There are things about him I don't seem to understand. Yes, I know, dear. He has the car, I suppose? Yes, he's driving. He's probably on his way now. I've got to think. I've got to think of something. I know. We leave town. You're driving rather recklessly, Sneed. You again. I'm going to haunt you. Try to forget that I'm here in the rear seat. If it annoys you. No, don't look under the seat. If I could only see you, get my hands on you, I'd show you how much it annoys me. <laughs> Shut up. I'm the voice of your conscience, Smeed. Perhaps you have a conscience. After all... I could choke that voice down your throat without any trouble to my conscience. If you only had the power of second sight, you could see me. That's an invaluable gift, Smeed. Being able to see things that other men can't. Some people call it mental telepathy. Some by other names. Remember, I can see the pictures you make in your mind. I told you about that. You can warn all you like. That's not evidence. Not in court. A lot of wild guesses that don't mean anything. Well, doesn't it frighten you a little, Sneed? I simply will you not to see me, and you don't. Careful. There's a truck coming down the road. Better sound your horn. Good Lord, the fool's taking up the whole road. It's going to hit you. Look out. It's gone. There wasn't any truck there. No. I willed you to see it. And you saw it. No truck at all. Just hypnotism. Gosh, I, I'm having hallucinations. But that's the way to dispel hallucinations. Drive straight through them. Be careful. We're near your house. And this old mill road is tricky. What about it? Look, Sneed. There's a man in the road ahead of you. There is, eh? Really? Why, it looks like one of your two pals that called on you today. I knew he would be here, Sneed. Really? You're going to hit him if you don't watch out. More of your hallucinations. You think that I'll believe you again, don't you? Well, I won't. Look out! I, I hit him. This time, it was no hallucination. Morning papers! Morning papers! It's convict Spike Cohen found dead last night on the old mill road. Spike Cohen wanted by the police. Found Here, son. I'll take one. Hey, yeah, sir. What's on it all about, Ma? Found dead on Old yes, Mill Road. But that's out of the Saints' place. Yes, yes, I believe it is. Notorious criminal struck by automobile and killed. He was certainly struck by an automobile. I wonder if Sneed knew anything about it. He acted very strange when he got home last night. Strange? What way? Well, he was pale and shaky, and he hardly seemed to know I was there. He told Carolyn that he'd had a message from out of town, and they'd have to pack and leave. Well, did he say when? Well, they thought they could get their trunks and things ready by this afternoon sometime. You're not going to let Carolyn go with him, Lamont? Not if I can help it. Let's see. A little after nine, I imagine Commissioner Weston is rather startled by the morning's news. I think I'll have a word with Commissioner Weston.
Commissioner Weston, they're sending Collins' body into the morgue. Uh, you went out there this morning and checked all details, Captain? Yes, sir, I did. And whoever hit him certainly smashed him up good. His face was all out of shape and couldn't recognize him. But we found these in his pocket. Now, let's see. A letter from his girl out west, looks like. Insurance policy. Uh, library card of Leavenworth Penitentiary. And this ring, sir, that Collins always wore with the figure eight on it. Oh, yes. Well, it's a good job done, whoever did it. Uh, tag that stuff and file it. Yes, sir. Let me know when the wagon gets here. Yes, sir. Police Department, Commissioner Weston speaking. Good morning, Commissioner. This is your good friend, the Shadow. Oh, yeah? Well, what the blazes do you want? To be of a little assistance, as usual. Yes, I see. I'm getting tired of this rigmarole, though heaven knows things happen when you phone. And what's the assistance today? Why didn't you investigate the ghost that haunts Sneed House, Commissioner, on the old mill road? Well, you missed up on that one, Mr. Shadow. I don't put much stock in ghosts. But we went out there and checked up. Searched the house. There's no evidence. No. Go again today, Commissioner. And this time, I think you'll get your evidence. <laughs> Is that the last trunk, Arthur? Yes. The expressman won't be here until four. Another hour yet. Why don't you go up and lie down a while, Caroline? Hmm? Yes, I will. I'll try to sleep a little now that it's daylight. You uh, told the milkman we wanted to pay him. He's coming back before we leave. Good. Well, that must be him now at the back door. <gasps> Get back. Get back. What's the matter, Snead? Did you see a ghost? Stop. Don't come near me. Not snap out of it, will you? This is me, Spike Collins. You? Alive? It wasn't me you hit with your car last night on that back road. Well, I guess you wish it had been, huh? Who, who, who was it then? It was Rat Wilson. The fool got a half pickle trying to get up his nerve for the job. Staggered out on the road before I could stop him and wham. It was all over. Wilson, eh? So there was my chance, see? Him and me about the same size. His face and hands all smashed flat. I put my stuff in his pockets, my ring on what was left of his finger. There I was, dead. <laughs> and all that time you was giving me the double cross. And maybe I am a ghost, but I can still deal with you, Sneed. Who is it, Arthur? Uh, just a minute, Carolyn. Now listen, Spike. There's only one way to see this thing through. You and I have got to stick together. The shadow is after us both. We've got to get out together. Away from this, this yeah. shadow. Don't kid me anymore about the shadow. You see this cat? I'm here on business and I'm going through with it. Put the old lady out of her misery. Good Lord. What's the matter? There. On the table. Nothing but a torn playing card. Yes, of spades. Or half of it. You've got to stop it, Spike. You've got to stop it. Arthur, what's the matter? Who's this man? Uh, Carolyn, this, uh, this is a friend of mine. A friend? Sure, a friend. But I don't understand. The pistol, I... Yeah, that's my way of doing business, lady. Your husband does it different. He's been scaring you to death, ain't he? Making you think the place was haunted. You know how he always does it? Stop it, Spike. He used to be an electrician, see? He rigs up a sort of electric sound box with a remote control switch. He usually puts the switch... Over here, by the door. Yeah, here it is. What's it all about, Arthur? The ace of spades. The end. Death. When he turns the switch, you hear the ghost dance. All you have to do is turn this knob. That's the way it works, lady. But I hear it. Arthur, 
I hear it. Turn that thing off, you idiot. What? I, I haven't turned it on. You haven't. Then, then what's making those sounds? <laughs> I am. Um... What's that? It's him. He's come. A shadow. I am coming up these cellar stairs. I will enter and stand beside you. Where is he? Stand back or I'll shoot. When I enter, I will touch one of you on the shoulder. Stop him. Stop him. And that one will die. It's the cops. Come here, Speed. It's a plant. You call in the cops. No, don't shoot, Spike. The jig is up. You're going to have the bullet I was going to give your wife, you double-crossing skunk. <laughs> Room, boys. Okay. Stick him up. Uh, 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 go. I, um, I got him. I'll stand. Still around. Break your arm. Uh, now, hand over that gap. All right. I'm through. You win. Spike Collins. Spike, Spike Collins. No, I, I thought he was. He supported. I thought you. Say, what is this? Who was that guy that got killed over here last night? Come clean, Collins. Whoever it was, I didn't do it. <laughs> Who's that? Where are you? Don't be alarmed. I am here behind you. In the shadow. Oh. So you're here, Shadow, eh? Maybe you know who got killed here last night. The man killed last night, Commissioner. Is a ghost. Oh, yeah? There are now two ghosts in this little adventure. Mr. Collins will probably make the third. You really should believe in ghosts now, Commissioner. And in shadows. <laughs> And now, before today's adventure with the shadow comes to a close, John Barkley, Blue Coal's own heating expert, is here to give us another of his practical talks on automatic heating. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Barkley. Good evening, friends. In former Sunday night talks of mine, I've shown you the importance of having the temperature of the home properly controlled with the Blue Coal automatic heat regulator. That is, in terms of health and convenience. Now, tonight, I'm going to give a third important reason for automatic heating, economy. Most authorities will tell you that the proper degree of heat in the home is 70 degrees. Naturally, you can't by hand keep your fire from giving off more than 70 degrees of heat, but the blue coal automatic heat regulator can and does. But here's how that saves you actual fuel dollars. Heating engineers have discovered that for every degree you raise the temperature above the desired 70 degrees, your fuel goes up in cost one and one-half percent. So you see, friends, by automatically shutting off that heat, that extra wasteful, unhealthy heat, heat regulator automatically saves on fuel costs. Why not investigate this blue coal heat regulator further? Ask your local blue coal dealer to give you a demonstration. The cost is only $18.95 plus a small charge for installation. You'll find it well worth every cent of that and more. Moreover, if you have any heating problems, discuss these also with your blue coal dealer. He is the best informed heating authority in your community, and assisted by his John Barclay trained serviceman, can, I'm sure, help you save money and have a more comfortable home this winter. This service is free. It costs you nothing. Thank you. The Shadow Adventure you have just heard is copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. The characters in this story are entirely fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> the weed of crime bears 
bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Arthur Whiteside.